All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, when this video is coming out, it is October 15th, and I'm getting married today. And so to celebrate marrying my very number one favorite thing in the world, I'm gonna spend a video talking about my very number two favorite thing in the world, and that is servers. So this is going to be a bit of a server home lab tour, where I'm just gonna kind of talk about specifically why I have all these servers, not only in here, but also in my laundry room as well. And we're actually gonna go then, and we're gonna log into Zabbix, as well as my XCPNG, Zen Orchestra hosts and actually go through and kind of talk about all the different virtual machines that I've got. This should be a lot of fun. It's kind of a celebratory one. So one other thing on that, I'm getting married. I will not be answering any emails from basically now until like two weeks from now. So I will be on my honeymoon. So I apologize if you're a client and you have any emergencies. I highly recommend Lawrence Systems. That's probably the, the next best thing that I will send people on over to. And so if you really need an emergency in the next week or so, Go out to them. I'll be back by the end of October though. All right, and so the way I wanna kinda of do this video is I wanna first start by talking about this rack. A lot of people have seen this in previous videos, but I wanna do a quick overview of what all is in here because it's actually grown quite a bit down there recently with a new file server that has expanded out everything and essentially just kind of my path forward for everything. And I'm very excited because it's a huge growth place for me in terms of this home lab. It is growing and as you can see, or probably here, it is a bit louder than it used to be. I've still gone through and I've got these super quiet power supplies in the back there that have made it so much quieter. So this is still an acceptable level of noise to me. I mean, I'm here, you can hear me. I didn't have to turn off any servers to make this video or anything like that. Though you're definitely gonna be able to notice it in the audio. Right here, we are in my guest bedroom that is literally next to my kitchen. So if that camera turned 90 degrees, you would actually be facing directly into my kitchen and we leave this door open constantly and it's not been a problem with noise. Katie's office is just down the corner right there as well, and it's totally fine to leave this door open. It's a quiet hum, but it's quieter than most noise machines are, and that is quite good. I think if I add too much more into this though, it's not gonna be like that anymore, but I was able to just barely skimp by with it. All right, and so this right here is my full-blown 42U rack that I bought from FS.com with my own money, though FS has sent me a lot of things in the past. This I purely brought with my own money and it has been slowly growing out into a ton of different servers that probably would be considered overkill, but it's a great place to be for me. So up at the top here is actually a client server. It's a client's NAS who had an issue and essentially had to get out of their apartment because they just weren't using it and basically just are renting out space here for me so I can keep their backups running and everything. So I do offer that I guess now as a service and then if we go down right here, we can see my top of rack switch. So this switch is the old X16 from Unify, which has 12 SFP plus ports and four 10 gig RJ45 ports on it. I am planning on upgrading this with the Aggregation Pro, which has four 25 gigabit SFP28 ports on it. And so from there, I'll have full on 25 gigabit connections to my main editing computer, as well as into my networking closet that is in my laundry room as well as to my file server and also into the virtualization server. So I'll be 25 gigabit pretty much everywhere where it really matters, which will be absolutely awesome. Overkill, but awesome. And then just some distribution switches. So that all has pretty much stayed the same throughout these previous videos, but I've got a couple of fun upgrades just down there and also right here. So this right here is an AMD GPU that I purchased off eBay and it is an AMD RX 580. Do you know how I picked AMD RX 580? I went to Steam and I knew I wanted AMD because I'm planning on using this with virtualization and Nvidia is a huge pain if you're trying to do anything virtualized. There are workarounds and they're opening it up but not touching that with a 20 foot pole. And so instead I was like, all right, well I know I'm going AMD. And then I went on Steam's most popular graphics cards list and found the first AMD one there that was reasonably repriced. And I was like, you know what? We're going with it. I'm not a huge PC gamer. I'm mostly a Xbox gamer. I just enjoy like being able to, when I do have time, sit down and just grab a controller and play on the big screen. Very relaxed, just not anything too intense. But then I heard of a game called Satisfactory. It's like, oh, I gotta do this. It takes that like trait of mind to optimize everything under the sun and I mean, it's kind of how you end up with something like this. And so I was like, you know what? I wanna set up a cloud gaming server. And so that is actually gonna be going in this case right here. This is actually a just regular computer. It is a regular computer that is currently operating as a server. 
a virtual machine server to be specific. So it is running a special operating system called XCPNG. It's a virtualization software. Essentially what that means is it allows you to take a bunch of operating systems, so a bunch of versions of Windows, Mac, or Linux, and basically run them all on a single machine. So this way they all get to share the same RAM, CPU, and memory, and be able to just run off of a single motherboard. And it has a ton of really cool traits. So I can just spin up a new virtual machine and move it around between different devices, and it's very flexible in that sense. They're also incredibly easy to back up because of a thing called Zen Orchestra, which is phenomenal. And I'm gonna be talking about that a ton later on in this video, but Zen Orchestra is kind of my preferred virtualization host software because it is so easy to use and has some of the best backup options, as well as like managing clusters of servers and hundreds of servers really easily can be done using Zen Orchestra and XCPNG, and it's totally open source, which I love. But right here, it is just a normal computer. There's nothing special about it at all other than the operating system that it's running. All right, and so now we're gonna go down below camera and I'm gonna get on the floor for this next shot. Where I'm gonna talk about the few servers down there. Those are the ones that have really changed. Ah, oh. all right, here we go. Nice and comfy cozy, very close together. I don't know of a better way to have this shot at all. So whenever you're building a rack out, you always put the heaviest stuff on the bottom. That way your center of gravity is as low as possible, which means it's a lot harder to tip over. And so because of that, all the interesting stuff is on the bottom. I don't know a better way to doing this shot, so I just get on the floor and we get nice and close and personal. It is what it is. All right, so right here, this is where a lot of the interesting stuff has changed. And I've got some new stuff in here. So the first thing you'll actually notice is this guy right here. I've done a video on it already, or probably a few videos you've seen by now about it. This is my new super micro all SSD file server that is awesome. It is actually running TrueNAS scale, and I'm gonna have an entire dedicated video on this at one point, but I did a ton of performance testing trying to get it to work. I originally installed TrueNAS Core on it because Core is just kind of the more stable version of TrueNAS. It is free BSD based, and it is just basically a huge legacy program that works really well. The thing is, the HBAs I've got in there, they're SAS2 HBAs from LSI, and LSI is probably the most common HBA, so I don't know why it, they would have this incompatibility. Had horrible performance issues when trying to read from uh, TrueNAS Core. It must have been a free BSD driver issue or something. I spent probably like 20 hours on this project and I don't have 20 hours to spend on Space Rex, unfortunately. So I spent a ton of time. I updated tons of different firmware versions for the drivers. I tried so many tunables through it. I tried every single forum post and there was nothing really on there that was running into. So then finally I'm airing my hair out and I'm like, well, maybe TrueNAS scale, TrueNAS scale runs Linux, we'll have a better time. Immediately, great performance. Exceeded my expectations of performance, immediately. It was very clear that there is some driver issue going on between TrueNAS Core, which is free BSD. So there's just some free BSD driver incompatibility there. That means that this server just effectively cannot run free BSD and it has to be running TrueNAS scale. That's actually not the biggest deal for me. So for me, I actually really want to spend a lot of time with TrueNAS scale because I've already, I know how to run TrueNAS Core in my sleep and TrueNAS scale is a really interesting new project. So I'm really excited for that. And so I'm fine with it. But yeah, this guy right here is running TrueNAS scale. And I think honestly, because of the driver limitations that you run into with FreeBSD, and I hate to say this, I know there's a ton of huge FreeBSD enthusiasts out there. I think the future of TrueNAS is going to be TrueNAS scale because FreeBSD has been falling off. It has been getting less and less popular when you compare it directly to Linux. And so because of that, I think the future of TrueNAS is going to be in TrueNAS scale. It's not going to be as fast. They're going to get it pretty much there. But FreeBSD just has so many driver issues and just people don't develop drivers for FreeBSD. Now with a lot of people moving to Linux, Linux drivers are getting made really well. So I, I think the future of TrueNAS is going to be in TrueNAS scale. Obviously, I've not talked to IX systems with that or anything like that and it's not gonna be for a very long time, but I do think the writing is on the wall eventually. 
I think they're both great products. And I do think if you're just starting out in your business and you just need something to work, first try free BSD TrueNAS Core because that's just gonna be the most stable for the longest time. But I do think eventually you will be installing TrueNAS Scale as the stable common version of TrueNAS. So that is right there. And it's actually got a dual 25 gigabit NIC on the back running two SFP28 ports on it. So right now that topper rack switch I mentioned earlier is just SFP plus, which is 10 gigabit. And so it's essentially the exact same port, it's the same size and everything. And so it's working just fine, is running SFP plus speeds, so 10 gigabit speeds, until I upgrade that top of rack switch to the Unify Aggregation Pro with those four 25 gigabit ports. The other thing it's already got is it's got 16 one terabyte SSDs in there. So it is screaming fast, complete overkill for my build, but it is awesome. The other thing that's really nice about it, it was more expensive than if I had bought an equivalent Dell system off of eBay, just because I built it myself. So when you buy everything yourself, components end up being a little bit more expensive. But what I really wanted out of it is I wanted a system I could build out. And so this is incredibly easy to build out from this. It's got a ton of extra PCIe lanes back there. So I can throw in host bus adapters for external JBODs and really just be screaming fast and add in a ton of stuff there. Eventually I'll also be adding in a PCIe card that just has a stack of M.2 NVMe SSDs on there. That way when I'm running a layer two arc for my hard drive TrueNAS build, I'll be able to just have screaming fast speeds. It's going to be awesome and it's just a really easy to upgrade platform and so far I have loved it. Then moving down here, we can see all reliable, my Dell R630, which has been basically the first real server I ever bought. It is currently powered off due to the fact that I do not have a powerful enough of a UPS to run both of them right now. And it's just been one of those things, I've been running all my virtual machines off of that server right there, the actual PC case. And so I've just not had time to go through. I need to upgrade everything. I wanna get a good UPS. And it's just, I've been crazy busy between Space Rex, getting married, and also my real job. So it's just been really busy. I am going part-time in January, so I will have a lot more time to use Space Rex and really start building this out. You're gonna see a lot better content from me I've honestly not been putting out videos as much as I'd like to and honestly not the quality I would have liked to just because I honestly haven't had time. I'm really excited for having a lot more time to do this and really get to flex the Space Rex muscle and really see how far I can take this. There's a ton of really cool content I just have not had time to build that I'm finally going to have time to make. And I'm really excited for the future of this next coming year. So that is going to be essentially the primary VM running machine. It is going to be running 90% of the virtual machines in my home lab. I guess, is it even a home lab? I guess it is a home lab if I'm running at home. It's essentially my office server now though, because this is running Space Rex. Eventually they're all gonna be in there. It's already got 128 gigs of RAM. And when you're virtualizing, when you're running a bunch of virtual machines, you tend to need a lot more RAM than you use CPU when you're equivalent, because CPU is actually shared between every single virtual machine. So if a virtual machine is not using doing anything, it's not really using the CPU much, it's not gonna take up any CPU, but it will take all the RAM that it needs. You can get some of it back, but for the most part, you need RAM for every single virtual machine. And so that tends to be the sticking point. The good news is that is upgradable to another 256 gigs of RAM if I ever find a reason for that. So that is on the horizon. But this PC is always gonna be here for two reasons. One, it's just a standard PC. And so that means slotting in a graphics card to it is nothing. Slotting in a graphics card to even my super micro server is not nearly as easy to that just because of form factor and everything. I could get it to work, but it'd be a huge pain with a ton of compromises. So instead, I'm keeping that PC for two virtual machines primarily that I'm gonna be running on it. One is Plex. The CPU that I bought in that server has specifically what's called Intel Graphics, which is called Intel QuickSync. So Intel QuickSync is a GPU built into the CPU. What that means is you can pass that GPU in to a virtual machine. And so the virtual machine that I'm running Plex on right now has the actual GPU built into the CPU passed into it. And that way I can do a process called hardware transcoding. Instead of using the CPU to transcode everything, it instead uses the GPU to transcode everything. And GPUs are incredibly accelerated at running graphics. And so transcoding video is lightning fast on them 
compared to trying to do it on a CPU. And so those are gonna be the two virtual machines I run in there constantly. And then I'll also have it for being able to just slot in whatever and be able to run stuff in there as an easy build up and replace because nothing crucial is gonna be on there. The plan is to have everything crucial on the R630. That's really not gonna change that often. Finally, at the bottom here, I've got a QNAP that I've been testing. They sent it to me and then they pushed back the date that it was gonna re release a few different times. And then QLocker got hit really bad. So I've still been testing it out. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do a video on it for a while because I just don't feel comfortable recommending QNAP right now. I think there is a use case for QNAP, but you need to be very specific. And I don't like getting products and just trashing them from the start. I think QNAP makes really good hardware, but I don't think you should ever use QNAP as a cloud, not for a while at least. You need to make sure if you're doing it, it is on a local only file server. And if you've got that use case for it, perfect. And finally down here at the bottom, we have the overworked UPS that I need to be replacing. I just really need to sit down and replace it and get a rack mounted version, but there's just so much stuff to do. I love to get rails, so actually powered rails on the back here so I can keep all my power supplies super clean. It's just expensive and I honestly don't even know how to buy them properly. So that's probably not gonna happen for quite a while. So this is the bulk of my servers. And so essentially this server and this server are both gonna be running XCPNG and being managed by Zen Orchestra. Those are actually gonna be virtual servers and they're gonna be running virtual machines. Then the rest of the servers in this rack are all what's known as file servers. So they're going to be either running backups, storage for the virtual machines in some cases, or also just like my editing rigs for videos and things like that. They're all essentially having really fast networking speeds. And so finally, there's the last server that I've got that I want to show off. And we're not going to go into laundry room right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop up my phone and we'll walk you in there and show you it really quick. You've already seen it before in a few different videos, but it's the third virtual machine server that I will be having in my house. It's absolute overkill, but it will be useful. All right. So now coming out of here, we're just going to go into the laundry room and you can see these two cables right here. Those are actually all feeding directly in to the cables, the fiber optic cables that are run into my laundry room. So we're just going to go in there. We're packing for the wedding, as you can see, and just go up into the laundry room. So right here, this is my networking closet and you can see those fiber optic cables up there that have been coming in and those are going directly in to this guy right here. So this server right here is actually what is running my other virtual machines. I'm going to talk about that in a minute here once we go into my living room, but it's there and it is a very old board that's pretty darn basic, but it serves exactly my needs. Finally, this is my router as well as a couple of networking switches. One's 10 gig, one is PoE. So that's why I've got multiple. And then finally, my smart home stuff's all right there. So I'm going to go into my living room here and we're going to talk about the different servers and why. All right, and so now onto the actual like screen tour where we actually get to see how everything's configured and everything's connected. And we're going to be opening up XCPNG and Zavix. Zavix is kind of how I manage everything. And XCPNG slash Zen Orchestra is actually all those virtual machines. So the first thing, let's go ahead and just look at Zavix. And Zavix is absolutely awesome. Zavix is a great way to manage all of your servers and it's completely free to use. And it's got tons and tons and tons of stuff here. You can see I've got all my different servers here and I can even look into what all of them are doing. So I can go ahead and pull up a graph. I can see everything going on on these things. This right here is my database. And so I can check and get notifications for stupid stuff that you otherwise would miss. Oh, hey, you're running out of space. This is shut down. All these things that you otherwise probably would not notice, such as swap, is just super easy to see. And they've got these things called templates that essentially allow you to just bring in other people's things and you can so easily find out exactly what's going on with your servers. It is really nice to have and I use it all the time. I try to log in at least once a week and just get a feel for everything going on. I'm also working on adding other things included to be also be able to say, oh hey look, shootspacerex.co has an SSL certificate that's about to expire. What's going on there? 
all these things I'm trying to add into one major piece. And so that way I can work with everything and be able to see everything on here and have one pane of glass for notifications. I'm also gonna be hooking this up to my AWS email distribution. And so that way when I have issues, especially as I'm growing, this is my full-time business, I wanna get email notifications for things that are critical. And so I get an email whenever something happens rather than finding out when I log in whenever I do. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Super useful and you can just monitor so many different things. This is my TrueNAS build. This is, it actually says TrueNAS Core in here, but it's actually TrueNAS Scale. And you can see everything in here and how it's all working. And you can see when it's getting hit hard and what is going on. There's so much data here and it's just a really useful thing to have. I'd highly recommend it. It's hard to get used to. It is hard to get set up and running, but once you kind of get your templates in and once you get everything kind of ready to go and every time you build a virtual machine, you've already got a config file figured out for it and all of those good things, managing everything is actually really, really easy. I tried it once in the past previously and it was a huge pain. I tried to do a bunch of custom configs and you just really have to trust the templates and find templates for you. And if you're really inclined, you can make your own template and publish it online for other people to use. But you really have to spend the time to figure out the fundamentals and how to get something set up where it's very easy to add new items in there or you're gonna have a bad time because it's gonna take a really long time. All right, and so now we can go through and we can see all of these different things. So now let's actually see how they're implemented in XCPNG, because most of these servers are actually being run on XCPNG, on Zen Orchestra. So as you can see, I'm actually just logging into all of these guys right here using X001 and nothing else. That's actually what's called a search domain, a DNS search domain, really useful to have. You should definitely check it out. And so right here, you can see all my virtual machines as well as all of the different virtual machines that are currently off. So this right here is Zen Orchestra. And Zen Orchestra orchestrates all of these XCPNG virtual machines. You can see right here, there are actually two different types of virtual machines here. There's VM02 and VM03. VM02 is the PC. VM03 is the small server, the one use server that is actually in my laundry room. And finally, VM01 will be that Dell R630 that you all saw earlier. So there are only two things running in VM03. I can go ahead and pull those up. So it is just my Homebridge server and a backup DNS server. So if you've seen previous of my videos, you know my goal for my entire home lab is everything crucial to run the Wi-Fi and run the house and the very basic stuff that you really can't live without needs to be in that network closet. That network closet is designed so that it stays up no matter what I'm doing over there with my box, no matter what I'm doing in the server room and the actual rack, the network closet stays up. And so as you can see here, the two really crucial things that I've got running here are my DNS server, a backup DNS server, because if my DNS server goes down, basically the Wi-Fi goes down. So I've got a backup one on that box. And finally, Homebridge. Homebridge is what runs my smart home. And so I wanna make sure that whatever I'm doing over there, all the smart stuff stays up and the lights keep working and everything like that. Technically, everything in the smart home is completely controllable by a physical device. So a light switch, a thermostat, a lock, anything. But it's still really nice to make sure that stays up. And both these things have very, very, very low CPU draw. And so it's pretty darn easy to run multiple. I could definitely add more. But right now, that's really what's running in there. And that's really what needs to stay up. Now, the really nice thing is, I can migrate these virtual machines incredibly easily. Since I don't have the exact same identical hardware across all my different virtual machine hosts, it's different. I can't live migrate them. Live migration is a really cool thing where the virtual machine starts running on one CPU and starts running on another CPU after that without ever shutting down. Literally, you have a web server running the entire time and it would never know. So it's really, really cool. But for me, migrations are incredibly easy. I essentially just move the storage over and then I boot it on the next device really fast, really easy to do. And so that means if I need to do maintenance on one of them, I can move everything crucial around to where I need to be. So right here, we can see all my virtual machines again. And so there's a couple of really key standouts that are super useful. This guy right here is my MariaDB server. So this is my database server. So you can see I've got actually a few different things here that use a database. My Nextcloud instant needs a database. 
the git t server right here needs a database. Zabbix needs a database. And so the way this is actually working, it's really cool. Essentially, I've got one database server that runs all my databases for my virtual machines. And so the advantage of that comes down to the fact that I just need one database to back up. Backing up a database is not as easy as backing up a regular virtual machine because databases always have stuff in RAM. And so that means that if the database gets shut down without being able to do a safe shutdown, such as like an unexpected power loss or something like that, your database very well could be corrupted, but it needs to keep everything in RAM for performance. And so to compensate for that, what I do is I have a backup job that runs every night that essentially is a script that exports the entire database tables, all those database tables into a text file essentially. It dumps them into SQL commands. It's really cool. So essentially these SQL commands can be used to actually run the database. So basically if you had to reconstruct the entire database from SQL, you could. You just copy and paste that in the file and it will create all the tables and put all the data in there and it would take a long time. Then because that's a massive text file and is an incredibly inefficient way to store data, it then compresses it. And it's very compressible, so I get a great compression ratio. I think I get a 80% compression ratio, which means it ends up being about 20% the overall size. And so that is what runs all the different databases. And so that way I've got all these different things. Then right here is my git t server, and I've got to pull that up. Pull up my git t server. And so right here, this is my git t server. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And right here, you can see a bunch of my different configs. So right here, anytime I'm doing some stuff with Docker or anything like that, and I'm doing command line stuff, I always push it to this git t server. And so this way, I've got all my stuff right here. So you can see all my different git configs right here. And it's just a really easy way for me to do it. I'm not doing one tenth of what's capable of git t, and that certainly do not get, need what's called GitLab, which is insane pipeline and stuff, but it's just a really basic way to have a web hosted Git server that lets you see everything you need to. So right here, if we go into my bind config, you can see all the different DNS records for all my different devices. So this way I've got everything really well organized in here so I can see everything that I need and anytime I need to change it, I change it here then I push it and bring it into the DNS server. And so that way, if anything happens, it's really easy for me to recreate. And so I've got a lot of good stuff in here and it's super useful to be able to do everything that I need. So I would highly recommend setting up a Git T server. Another standout one is gonna be Plex. I already talked about that with the virtual machine pass through. I'm also running Nextcloud, mostly as a way to actually kind of test it out and eventually move on to that. I'm going to try to get my company more and more focused on open source software, mostly for the ability to tinker myself and set things up myself and do things my way. And it's much harder to do than using Synology. Synology is phenomenal, but by using open source software, I'm able to have a lot more flexibility and integrate things myself. And it's really cool for me. Then we've got the other few servers. So there's not a ton here right now but it's so easy to add in additional virtual machines. And probably one of the best parts about XCPNG and Zen Orchestra are the backups. The backups are so great. Oh, let's see here. Well, we had a failed backup here. So essentially, why is it? oh, my, um, the, the volume I'm sending this to is starting to get full on Synology. I need to go through and sit down and buy, I need to spend a few thousand dollars and get a ton of storage. I just haven't had the time or the money. Well, it's just been one of those things that I've not been able to get myself to go through and do it. So I've been running on very low storage just for all these backups. And so I just need to clean out the old backups and snapshots and essentially not be storing as much data as I am. It is what it is. And so essentially that's why these have been failing. There's a lot of overhauling that's going to be done in the new year once I have so much more time. But overall, Zen Orchestra makes managing this stuff so easy. It's got great metrics here as well that you can just kind of see how everything is coming together. It's even better when you actually look at the different hosts. So we can just go ahead and open this guy up and see all the different stats. Hey, what's using a lot of CPU? How much network throughput are we using? And you've got great ways to see everything. And so you can see when, oh, hey, look, at the same time every night, 
a backup happens. So that's where a transfer is going through. And so you can really get to see how everything's working together. And it's a great just single pane of glass where you can see everything going on. The one thing you'll say is there's no support here. You can actually build XCPNG totally yourself because it's an open source project. And so that's what I've done here. But it's just such a great software. I really would recommend it over a lot of the paid softwares out there for running virtual machines because you don't have to pay for it. There is nothing stopping you from just building it yourself if you ever get an insanely high bill. So if all of a sudden their support agreement says, all right, well now we're gonna triple our prices. You just go, all right, well, I can just hire out support myself and run it from sources. Which when you're running like ESXi and all these other companies who kind of have complete control over you, you don't really get. And so that's one of the huge advantages of using open source software, even if you pay for a support agreement, is you just have a guarantee that if anything goes wrong, you can continue to use what you've got open source. You just lose support. And so that's why I would highly recommend people look at it. It's great for tinkers and it's even better for businesses because you know that you are not tied into a solution. Because the major cost in doing this is actually setting up for the very first time, training your employees on it, getting it all up and running, getting the hardware running. Downtime is so expensive for a business. And so by setting up with a service, where you are not locked in if they do anything, gives such good peace of mind. All right, well, I guess that's gonna be it for this video. So I will be having videos that are on auto post right now. So I've got enough to get me through the end of October and then I'll be back to my regular posting schedule essentially where I'm actually on there. But when you don't see me replying to comments for a while, just know I'm getting married and having a great time. All right, thanks for this. Put any other tutorials or anything in here you'd like to see in the comments below. I'm planning on really expanding out and doing a lot more home lab content and would love to know what people would be interested in seeing and setting up in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.